Okay, we're gonna do some embroider, so so we need to first hook some fabric. I'm gonna use the five by seven hook for demonstration. So as all the embroidery hoops, we have inner and outer ring. On some of the ones, we have one uh, uh, screw for the tightening the outer ring. The larger ones will have two. So we need to kind of evenly tighten those ones when we use the larger hoops. For the five by seven and four by four hoop, uh, Dirky has also a special kind of outer ring. It is called the freedom ring, which you just pull it apart. And I need to gonna use all my muscle because the spring is very strong. And I pull it apart and then it um, opens this one so I can easier hoop. All I had to put this uh, the inner ring on uh, in it and then pull the little knob and that will release. Just make sure that you don't have your fingers between there because it is a very strong uh, spring and they even have a warning that called pinch hazard. But these are great for uh, if you have a hard time tightening these screws. So as always with the embroidery, we need fabric and stabilizer. And for my fabric, I'm just going to use some fabric that has a pattern so I can use some of the camera features in the machine. And as normal, I norm just mark usually where I want my center or the design to go. So in this time, I'll just do a little finger crease. And I may use the marking pen just to do a little bit of a marks on it too, because it's otherwise kind of hard to see it in the camera. So we need the uh, fabric and then we need some stabilizer. And as always for the stabilizer, we need to have the stabilizer about one inch larger all around the hoop. This is again the time not to be, uh, be skimpy about it, the stabilizer. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the strip. The 12 inch roll of stabilizer just gives a really good uh, size for the 5x7 hoops. Well then, um, as always, uh, if I can bond the fabric and the stabilizer together, I will get the best results. I'm not going to use the spray adhesive on this time because I, I would have to run outside to spray my stabilizer with that one. But uh, I'm, I'm using a uh, uh, tacky stabilizer that is water activated. So in this case, I'll just give a little sprinkle of water, smooth it out. And if I let it sit a little while, it will just uh, it will turn into tacky surface. Uh, other options I could use is the iron-on stabilizers. So it's still like when it a bit too much, so let me sit it just a little while. But other things what I normally do with my fabrics, I do starch them a little bit. So I use some best press on this fabric to uh, get the wrinkles out, but also to give it a little bit more body. If I have a uh, more well, a really flimsy fabric and then denser design. I may uh, even put the, uh, the Terial Magic or a couple layers of regular starts. Okay, so I think it's up. Oh, see, now that I let it sit a little while, so I want it to have just a little bit tacky. And now I can stick my fabric and I did draw with the marking pen those center here so that will show a little bit better in the camera. The crease marks just don't show in the camera very well. Um, I usually try to hook things fairly straight. Of course, we have in the 10 needle machines that have the cameras, we have lots of other features that we can apply, uh, even uh, if, if we didn't hook something correctly. But this is a great handy tool if you have this one. And all the multi needle machines, the hoops that come with the machine, they come with the templates. So these ones, let me put it the right way around, I can see the text. Uh, there are little notches in the hoops, and this will line up. That will help me hoop things straight. It is especially helpful when you are trying to line up designs. Uh, if you have multi-hooping, uh, if you have a template, then you can use this template. Uh, this uh, they actually call them seats in the manual. Kind of, I used to kind of call them grids or templates, but officially I guess they're called seats. So what I will do is I will line up my center with the crosshairs and the center markings on this template. That way I will get my design so that they will be centered as close as possible, but more importantly, not crooked. Again, with the camera, we don't really care about too much, but I want to try to show if you don't have a camera or don't want to use that one. Then I need to open the outer ring. And that, again, this is something that you don't want to open it so much that uh, uh, 
uh, you have to tighten back a lot because then you get a little bubble on the side because this only tightens it on one corner. So um, I want to just tighten it just enough uh, or loosen it just enough that uh, it will be a little bit thicker, a little bit wider than the thickness so my fabric can stabilize it. And before I put this one in, I have put some uh, ho uh, hoop grip on mine because uh, uh, this one will uh, kind of give me a little extra support, especially when I have these long hoops. Uh, they tend to uh, not give as much support on this um, straight edge, so that will kind of hold my fabric tighter together. So I use that one mo on most of my hoops. And it is something that you can keep it there for a long time. Some point you're going to see it start to come off a little bit on the corners, but that's still uh, on the area I really want it is still fine. But then some point I will take that one out. So again, I'm just going to loosen it enough. Well, you kind of see that it, it wants to slide around a bit. So I'm going to put a couple helpers to see uh, how we can stabilize this uh, uh, hoop in uh, stays. So a couple helpers that my, uh, uh, will keep your hoop in more staple uh, so that the things don't slide around so much. Uh, Dime has a really nice uh, hooping mat. It's a, a credit mat, a little blue color, a silicone mat. That will really hold the uh, outer ring nicely so it doesn't slide around and you can use the grids to line it up. Those ones are back order at the moment, so I don't have one on here to show, but I'm going to be uh, just using this uh, poor man's version. I put a shelf liner. Uh, it's not as good as a silicone mat, but uh, this is the best I have at the moment when I do this taping. Well then, how do I stabilize then the inner ring? Uh, I, um, if I put a little piece of a double-sided tape, whether it is uh, the uh, Stitch Perfection tape, Wonder tape, or even normal double-sided tape, that will help quite a bit on uh, stabilizing the, in, uh, the inner ring too. So I'll just cut a little piece and put it on the bottom side of the uh, that uh, inner ring. And then I will, on this one, I would need to score the uh, paper off. So I will use a pin. That is usually the hardest thing is to get that paper out. So let me get that one out. The pin really helps on this one. Okay, and then I'll do the sec second one and come back. So now I have put that double-sided tape. And if I put my sheet, template, grid, whatever I want to call that one. And then I will line that one up with my center mark, my little grid that I draw. And I push this one in the sides. So now my fabric is a little bit held up in there so it, my fabric doesn't slide when I'm hooping this one. So let me get my hoop. And then I would usually start on a side that I don't have the connector and I will put it in there. I may have to loosen it just a little bit more because I said I want to have it just a little bit wider, but my stabilizer is a little bit thicker than I had thought. Here we go. And then we will use the either the standard screwdriver, you could use the little ring that comes with the machine. Uh, we also have in the shop are the hoop screwdrivers that look like this one, but they are a little bit larger. This is for my sewing machine. But what I normally use is the multifunction tool that comes with my uh, Luminaire machine. So this one works great. It goes over this hoop screw uh, just, and I can easily tighten it. Oh, I maybe had it a little bit too open because I normally don't pull it so many turns. Because what happens when I, if I have this one uh, uh, loosen too much. When I start tightening it up, I get this little bubble. And the tendency would be now to start pulling and tucking because now I have wrinkles on this one. So instead of me doing that one, I'm going to loosen it a little bit and take it off. Smooth the fabric in there and then make sure it's still lined up pretty close. And then I will hoop it again. So instead of me trying to uh, pull and tuck, especially woven fabric, even though I have bonded the fabric and stabilized for the most part, but I could easily uh, pull it out of shape. And if you have a knit fabric, you definitely want, don't want to be pulling and tucking. So that way I can now tighten it up. 
Well, um, other option what I could use is the Freedom Ring. So that is only available at the moment, as, a, as far as I know, just for the two sizes. So let me show how that would work. So if I put that one there, lay it, and then I will pull this little, uh, little pin. But the important thing is that I don't put my fingers between there because that will pin. Again, then I just uh, put my in, uh, inner ring there, pull the lever. And it just automatically spring tightens this hook pretty well. So that is just an other option. Especially when you have some bulky items, then it's kind of handy one. But that's when I normally use it most times. So let me use the standard one that comes with the machine. And make it a little bit more tightened. And let me double check. Everything's still lined up. And here we go. And then I will give just a little bit more tighten in this one. Then I could not really tighten this one as well with the fingers, but either the screwdriver or that the multifunction tool that works. Well, this is something that uh, depending on uh, machines, the, uh, the household soy machines, the manufacturer on my embroidery uh, expert class said they told that you should never uh, recess the hoops. multi is a little bit different. These outer rings are th uh, thinner than your uh, inner rings. And they do recommend on these ones that you would then recess the hoop. That will really tighten that uh, fabric that is hooped. So I will usually just after I tightened it, I pulled it up. So I get really, really nice tight, drum tight hoop in this way. If you have knit fabric and if you hooped your both fabric and a stabilizer, then you really need to bond your fabric and uh, knit fabric together. I, I like to use the... Uh, no so mess fusible most of the times on my t-shirts. So on that one, if I hook both layers, then you would need to uh, not, uh, not to recess this because that will stretch it too much. But on a stable woven fabrics, uh, the, ma the manual actually tells to recess this a bit. So now we're ready to go and embroider. Okay, now we need to make sure we have the correct driver in the machine. So the memory rule for the, uh, some of the hoops were A for all meaning all the four hooks that came with the machine, plus also the uh, 8 by 12 on the uh, 10 needle machine. Uh, and so in this case, I do have the A driver, uh, but I'm going to take it out and show how to put the B driver if you use the, uh, the 8 by 8 or the jumbo hoop or then some of the other specialty hoops. So all of these hoops, they have been mounted with the, with the, some of the screws. So the one's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to move the camera, but there's one screw in this one. And then I have another similar on the other side of the head. So I will loosen these two. And I had finger tightened, but you may want to use that little screwdriver to tighten that, these ones. And then you hope that you don't drop them on the floor. <laughs> and when I taken these little screws out, then I will just lift the driver, pull it kind of behind there and take this one out. Okay, and the, the, uh, the current multi needles, they all come with the A and B drivers. The older thing, six needles only came with the one. So again, I'm going to slide it on. There are little pins, again, kind of hard to show them in the camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back into the A-frame because that's the hoop I'm going to be using. So again, I, was just, I, had, I had not even tied into screws when I just sewed this one. But I just lift it up and carefully pull it behind so I don't uh, hit it into the, uh, the pieces behind the machine. So the A driver, again, I just have to, then obviously the leather, leather eye on the pointing on the top side. Oh, this is so long. <laughs> pointing on the top side. And then you will slide it up so the leather is... So it just uh, kind of uh, pops on it almost on its own. The first time when you use, you may have to kind of look a little bit where does it co uh, connect. But it's just, there are little pins. And I'm going to move the camera a bit to show you those ones. But I went, went with the little pin. There's a pin that is in the, in the machine. And the driver just locks into that place. And the uh, hole beside it is where that one of these set screws will go. This is the one that I only t uh, take out and loosen it only the time when I change the drivers. So I want to tighten it first. That's a long screw. There we go. Tighten it first finger tight. And then I like to still use this uh, 
So I'll use this little ring and I can give a little extra twist with that once it doesn't look a loo right braid loose. So that was so we just uh, sorry uh, we will just uh, line up with the pin and then we will put the one of the set screws there. And then on the other side of the machine uh, there's another pin and beside the pin uh, there is the place that the other screw goes. Okay. So I put the other screw in but I did not tighten it. It's just uh, still very loose. And then I take this large of screw on the uh, left side of the machine and I will loosen it a little bit more because that allows me to move the left side of the arm depending on the size of the hoop that is how the machine reads the hoop will it be between the arm block is location and then on the driver so in this case when, when I go all the way in my machine that will be the 14 inches uh, uh, size hoops uh, then if I move it a little bit, I hear a little click. So that will be the, I don't know if I call little clicks. That will be the 8 by 12 hoop. And that will be the 5 by 7. And there will be 4 by 4. And then the one for the tiniest one. So let me go and. There it goes. And then we tighten this one. And then I will get the hoop and put it in place. So the hoops we, uh, this, uh, the one thing to watch these hoops is that they go either way. Like in a sewing machine hoops, uh, we, uh, they go only in the machine one way. But these ones, the brackets on both sides are the same. So if I accidentally hook my thing upside down, well, they really isn't upside down on these hoops because I can put them either way. Well, that's a good thing. The bad thing is that if you are doing a, a applique, and uh, you end up taking the hoop of the machine to trim it, make sure you put it back in the same way because you could actually put it upside down and you know, unless your design is exactly in the center and perfectly uh, symmetrical, uh, then it may, your next stitching may not line up. So kind of, a, if I have an applique piece, I may sometimes put a little sticker or something to kind of point out that this is the way on the hoop to go in. I often use a little feature in the machine that I can pull the frame towards me, but just that's the only time that, that I would have had trouble. So these um, uh, drivers, uh, they have a little spring loaded and then a pin. That is a straight part. This goes under the spring and then uh, the, uh, the pin goes onto the slot on one side and to the hole to the other side. So I just kind of start going like uh, sliding out that uh, uh, top edge pull it in and line it up. And it is important that you have them lined up on those pins on both sides. So let me see if I can move it. So that way that this is on the, on the lock. And then this one is in the lock. Well, I did not at the moment when I put it in, I did not tighten it totally because I want to make sure that I did have connect, uh, counted the uh, clicks properly. And yes, that lines up good. So now I'm going to tighten these uh, two, two screws, uh, the, the ones on the left side, the large one. And very, very important, very, very, very important, this smaller one in the middle of the machine. And if you don't have a good grip in the fingers, this little tool is very handy to give a little extra twist on it. Because if this loose is screw, your hoop will uh, not be read correctly. And you may get an alarm saying that put a large hoop in a machine, or your uh, design would be off on, on if it is a hoop that uh, would still fit into it. So that is very, very important so that that is tightened. So if you just kind of barely tighten it and the machine starts stitching and it vibrates a bit, it may uh, come loose and then the micro switch that is reading in this part of the driver will get the false signal. So again, important that one. Okay, I'm on a home page on my multi needle machine and I have set the uh, colors uh, on my machine just for the, uh, the defaults, meaning there's no colors selected at the moment. So all of mine are blank. That is kind of how like the machine would come out whenever you get it out of the box. Nothing has been assigned in the color memory. And on my settings page, that's where um, I had earlier when I saw some of the other videos on the number two, uh, number part two of the, on this series, uh, I had some colors assigned and certain threads anchored. Well, I wanted to start this one like you never had the machine before. So, or then anytime if you want to kind of start from uh, just a blank screen, 
on this uh, settings page on a, on, a, on a third page on my machine there's a button on the top when I touch this one it put all this page in the factory settings meaning it cleared all my defaults on that one it only resets at one page so I'm gonna go and pick up just a little simple design and I hope moved a little bit when I went in there on this screen so there are there's a little simple design there that um, I will just pick that one and set this design has um, has a total of six colors so again it will show on the top uh, in this uh, display that that uh, the size of the design I had set in the settings uh, units to inches so mine is in inches at the moment so almost two inches tall and then about two and a half wide six colors and then uh, I could even have a look a bit closer look how it would look like on my 5x7 hoop that I have in my machine because it reads the hoop that I have I could also fit this one into the smaller hoop and they are shown on the top on this one too showing that this design would fit in the middle center position it would fit on the 4x4 and anything above that one the tiniest little cuff hoop it would not fit on that one so that is grayed out but this one would allow me to just to look how it even will go on the different hoops or if I touch the magnifying glass I get a closer view of it just to kind of see the, what, how does that design looks like because it is kind of tiny I also have this on uh, the screen uh, the stitch simulator again these are some of the newer machines uh, the very original older like my very first uh, six needle the, the uh, BMB6 from Babylock that machine I didn't have some of these features so if you have an older one uh, uh, you may not have some of this but uh, I'm gonna go through all this machine has so this this simulator would uh, show me the order how the stitches will uh, show out uh, it, uh, this is a feature that usually is on the embroidery software but we have some of the bigger machines that one too I can even change the speed so that's a fairly small design I will leave it on the, so the slowest speed that's play so we'll show that how does it test it out here yeah. so it's a great one to check out to see which colors go first or how does it show out instead of taking me the design in the embroidery software and stitching it there there we go that was a quick sewing I keep joking that the next sewing machine will be this fast can I close that one so that was that little um, uh, image window there that lets me have a closer look of it um, oh no if I close this one so when I had touched this color button on this one that's when I got to see the colors and uh, a little bit more information about the, uh, the how many stitch, uh, stitches there were uh, well actually on this page uh, that top row stays all the time there I see that same information any of these pages so we have quite a bit editing on this one we can resize it as a default I can make it 10% uh, smaller and that takes me back to of original size or 20% larger in this one it does not calculate the stitches so it will be just stretching out those quasi not the stitches that's why we have a limitation how much we can resize in this one but then we I have again this is now the larger machines we have another button that uh, allows me to resize a little bit more and when anytime I push that button it will just tell me that uh, is it okay to put it back in the original size and angle and position in case I had moved it regardless if I had moved it or resized it always gives you this message and I just said sure go ahead now I can resize down 60% from the original size or up to 200 from the original size so now I have a much bigger uh, symbol there uh, I can also resize these ones and uh, the same on both or both of these ones uh, proportionally or I can squash those threads either horizontal or vertical then I have on this the setting I also have a capability to just to change the, change the density so I can go down 80% or up to 120 so if I had put a little bit thinner thread maybe 60 weight thread and so I could may, want to have a little bit more stitches in it or if I put maybe 30 weight thread then I can take some of the stitches out so I have a little extra capability even if I'm not resizing it I can still change the density on this one or on these uh, motifs so I'm gonna leave this back to an original size at the moment and then we can of course rotate the design now uh, we have the uh, a 90 degrees 10 degrees one a counter uh, clockwise and, uh, and clockwise 
And then on the machines with the cameras, we even have it 0.1 decrease. Some of the others, with uh, the older ones, we had only those first uh, three on both ways. Reset takes me back to original. Then we can mirror image, because this design really doesn't make any difference because it's proportional, but on some of the designs, it's nice to be able to uh, mirror image in, in the machine. And it is a vertical mirror. Then I have some patterns that are not available. Density is not available because that one is only that density setting is only with the lettering. We had the density or if I went on that size pattern for the motifs. But for the letters we have a separate and same these all these bottom two rows, those are only for lettering. So I'll show that a bit later how to work with lettering. And then um, I'm going to show that if we touch a color button, it will show me the number of colors on this one and what the colors are. I had set my machine with the name of color, so they are just kind of generic names. They are not on those color numbers, but on the settings. And I went through on the part two on my uh, series of the classes towards the end of it. Fairly quickly, I went through the settings pages. But this is where I can change it if I want to use certain thread brand. So I'm just going to leave the name of color because I have a multiple different colors, different brands. And so I can just to select in here if I want to change it to some other color, I can uh, select them this way. I'm going to hit the reset. I'm, I'm going to leave this one at the uh, factory setting at the moment. I can use the, uh, the 64 uh, color uh, chip uh, color chart or then the 300. Well, really the 300 happened to be the custom thread table. The machines come with the built 300 Robinson Anton rayon threads. I had uh, set on my custom thread table, I had set up some of the Robinson Anton rayon because I was doing a project that I had all the Robinson Anton rayon colors on it. So that way I was able to set my, my designs in the software, already those colors I wanted. And when I took that design into the, in my machine, that uh, then it automatically took those colors that I had picked up. So that was kind of nice. I was able to set my own color table. You can select variety of thread uh, brands. There's a little bit more thread brands on this one than we have in the settings. We don't have all the possible thread brands that they are. There are just so many. But in that case, if I want to add on other one, maybe on the brother colors. Um, let me see if I remember one. That maybe I'll put just one, two, three. I don't know if there's one, one like that one. If I do set. I guess that was on the color. So I can just set the color number and set it on the next empty slot. Took me a little while to create this one, but then uh, now I, I could use those red colors if I have another project using those Robinson Anton rayon. If I want to go back to the original color chart that uh, there was the 300 Robinson Anton uh, polyester threads, I can go on a Prado website and download that red chart put it in a memory stick and read it from the memory stick to lo load them back up on this position. So that's the reason mine, when I click the 300, it actually shows my custom thread table. I'm going to go back to the 64 basic color chips. Then the next one uh, allows me to do uh, multiple uh, designs on this one. I can do patches. So if I want to just to have a whole bunch, a whole row of these ones, I can uh, on uh, horizontally, I can add either side uh, on uh, on this one. I can add how many I want to have these ones. If I don't want some, maybe I'll take that last one out. I can stretch them out a bit or I can squash them together. And then if I go to the vertical one, I can add rows above and then rows below. Again, in the same way, I can stretch them out or squash them together. And if I don't want certain, maybe I only needed eight of them for some reason, I could cut some out. So I have this uh, knife. I'm just going to touch the knife. And now this part is separate. So if I want to have just from here, um, I've taken one of those out. Then I will go to the uh, vertical because this one, depending which one I, this I have selected. And maybe I'll take the very last one out. That's the knife. So now this is separate and I could hit the delete to delete that one. So now these are kind of two separate designs. So let me delete that one too. So this one has allowed me to uh, make multiples. 
The nice thing on this one is that it automatically colors out, which a little bit on the multi nil machine is like, does it really matter? Because my if this has six threads, six color changes. So if I put uh, those six threads, my, if my machine, even if it embroidered the first design all at one time, and then the second one, then came because it changes the threads automatically. Well, it does a little bit matter because uh, uh, that it says a little bit uh, on uh, time when it moves ahead because it doesn't have to select the uh, different needles uh, uh, every time it changes the thread color. So that way uh, the, it will be really only six color changes. Of course, single little machine that will make a big difference, but even multi needle it is handy feature. We do have a color sort even the designs that were not used this way. So this one kind of automatically color sorts things. Other things what I can do on this one is I can add little uh, positioning marks. So let me take one more uh, uh, column out. I'm going to take, let me see which way would I do. Actually, I'm going to add one more this way and then I will go and remove those. I just have a row on this one. So maybe I want to have a whole row of these designs going across and uh, um, th then I want it to rehoop and continue the next one. So the very last one on this one will allow me to put little uh, placement marks. So like in this case that is this, uh, selected so I could uh, touch those corners and now I have a little, uh, this has a little kind of a, a longer pasting stitches that are stitched in there and after you have finished embroidering you can easily pull them out. And then I would most likely want to go up, sorry, I need to touch this one to move it. It's going to see those little, uh, little marks and I would put them on that side. I can put them anywhere. If I want the one in the middle too, I could do that one too. So it will just show those little marks. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's going to show those a little bit better. So they are, they, it will help me to align for the next position. My machine, this one has uh, the pattern connection using the camera. I will do a totally different video about that one and uh, I may actually do it with my Lumine, which is the same feature as it is on the multi needle. So, uh, but this is just manually lining things up. And that is where it's handy to use the templates then, uh, those uh, sheets, so the, the, sorry, the manual calls them sheets, to uh, have your fabric perfectly straight and then I can use those markings. Okay, so let me just to zoom back out there and then I will just touch this one to go back to the original, let me go back in there, the original one, and I, I will take those marks out too. So I'm going to back for the original. I can move the design any way around. Because I had put the 5 by 7 hoop in a machine, the machine reads that hoop. So that little, uh, little uh, box around in there, that is my 5 by 7 embroidery area. In the editing screen, yes, I can go outside the area. But if I wanted to go ahead and try to embroider, I will get the complaint saying that uh, I'll put the larger hoop. So that it, just, it won't fit, I'm outside the hoop area. So it's just kind of nice visual that I know that if I needed to use that hoop, I better stay with the inside the box. So this one I can move it with the, with the stylus or finger or mouse, or I can use this little uh, arrow keys to nudge it. The little dot takes me in the center. Selection key will allow me to select multiple uh, on the next ones. Well, I only have one design, so nothing happens when I touch this one. But if I touch the next pattern, now I have two of them. So whatever the uh, where I have the box around is selected. So I can select either touching button on the screen, or I can use these little arrow keys there too. So anything that I have now box around is the one I would be working on. Well, if I want to work this as a group, I do have then multiple selection key. In this one, I could have, let me go back. I'm going to add one more. So let's put three this time. And now if I go multiple selection. So if I wanted to just select those two, I can select them and then I can move these ones as a group. They kind of just are temporarily connected. If I, if I don't want one, one of those ones, I would just do, uh, it's just gonna, I can select it in there or I can hit reset. Other way I can see, uh, select items is with the, the selection key and set. Because sometimes if you have pieces on top of each other, it's hard to touch them in the screen. So you can then uh, use the arrows and uh, set and reset. If I want to select everything, I have a button for that one too. If I want to unselect everything, I have a button for that one. I'm going to select everything 
and OK. So now the epoxy around all of these. So now they move as a group. But if I go and touch the select key, now they are again separated. So it was kind of like a temporary spray adhesive, just temporary uh, uh, hook together. Let me go back and select them all. If I wanted them a little bit more permanently hooked together or grouped together, I'm going to touch the grouping key. This was earlier grayed out because I only had one selected. Anytime I have more than one, it's available. So now these are grouped together and they will move as one group. I have limited options for uh, changes on this one. I can only rotate it. If they are on this, I, I only have the uh, capability to duplicate all of these three at one time and then some of these other functions. So I have a little bit limited options what I can do uh, when they're grouped. So let me undo that one and again I'm gonna delete some of those ones. I only have one. There's a reason I only really want to do one. Uh, then I can all, uh, do, I can turn this one into a patch and I have multiple options, mini patch or applique. Uh, first one I can select how far I want to have my applique stitches to go around the design. The default is five millimeters. Uh, if it is more intricate design, I may, well, may want to have it even further out. What this one does, it will add applique stitches around this design so I can turn it into a patch. And on this machine, we have extra options that our household machines don't have. Uh, the default is that it would be doing those uh, applique stitches right around the uh, design, kind of follow the design. I could have it also to be a circle, which I can then resize the circle on this one and move around, or some of the other shapes. So if I want to do a little, um, uh, let me just stretch this out a bit. Maybe I want it to have a shape that will be kind of a little di uh, diamond kind of one. So we have a lot of different kind of shapes that I can pick up to put on that. I will select the one that follows the outline. Again, this one, it will put the applique stitches uh, about five millimeters, well, not about exactly five millimeters uh, around the design. I will touch set and then uh, it will just check the result and press OK. So I can have a look to see, do I like it that way? Yeah, that looks really good. If I don't want them to be that close, I can cancel and maybe I want to uh, put them a little bit further out the way and then I can try it again. So I see on the results before I'm committed. I said, that's good to me, that's okay. What this did, you're gonna zoom in a little bit. It added three more stitches around this design. Now we have the original six colors and then there are, uh, there's a three ap applique stitches. So if I wanted to embroider this one maybe onto a denim jacket and I don't want to hook the uh, jacket for the, all these colors, I would want to make this as an applique patch. So I would then hook my uh, the fa background fabric for the applique with the stabilizer, embroider the design plus the first part on this applique, which happens to be applique material. So if I touch, it's just a straight stitch around. And then I can take the hoop of the machine, cut it along these lines. And sometimes I, I even put black thread for that part and I use a scan and cut, direct cut uh, on the scan and cut machine to uh, cut this out. If it's a simple shape, scissor size fast to do that too. And then I would hook my, let's say the denim jacket, and then I will uh, sew the next color, which will be the, uh, the, uh, the article applique position that will uh, stitch that onto that, uh, that jacket. Then I would place my pre-cut patch and I would most likely use some uh, glue, fabric glue, or temporary spray adhesive, and then it will show the next color will be the satin stitches around. So that will allow me to put little applique, uh, little, um, uh, different kind of appliques. So this one we have different shapes. Okay. Uh, then the next two ones, those ones are related for the design center. Because if I go back onto a machine, IQ designer or my design center, uh, where we can digitize uh, designs in the machine. I cover all of that one in the number five class and that is already on our YouTube channel. So if you want to watch that one. So in this class, I'm not going to go through that. So let me go and get one more time this little simple shape. So that was on our editing screen, pretty much all the information I had. So we get the information about how many colors there are and the, that if I rotate it 
and then the size of the, the size, of, size of the design and how much I moved it from the center because if I move it that will show that there also and then if I want to add more designs I can go add kit from the machine or if it is something I saved on my machine or memory stick I can get those designs and add more and then of course delete will delete whatever is selected so now that I finished with my size that looks good to me I will touch edit end we have a little bit more options this time or well, there are different options this time we can still rotate that was, we have still that option so if I just notice that I didn't rotate in the right spot I can still do that one I can add pasting stitches and what it does it will put just the, uh, about half an inch long uh, stitches and the default color is black I sometimes I said well I don't want to really stitch on a black because um, I may just uh, want to have more matching colors so that it doesn't leave any residue on the when, uh, when I pull those ones out in that case I can still go and change that color I just had to go back to edit screen and then I can change that maybe I want to use the white for the pasting stitch so I can still change the colors if I if I don't want them to be on the default black if I don't have black thread in the machine because the multi needle is a uh, half half color blind it sort of knows the colors if I use the color memory that is which I'm currently set up to use the color memory let me take that uh, pasting stitch out one note about the pasting stitches is that if I have moved see, now when I move the design you can hear the machine moving on the previous page when I was in the editing screen I could move it around and the hoop wasn't moving this time the hoop moves and it doesn't let me go beyond my embroidery area so that's the difference on the move move keys whether I touch it in the screen or use the arrows but if I had moved this for a little bit and then I touch the uh, the up uh, the pasting stitches button it will put it back in the center uh, so it's important if you want to add your pasting stitches and uh, do that first and then you may have want to need to rotate the design or whatever you need to want to do on that one and then move it in the right position so it kind of just uh, automatically brings it back in the center I'm gonna take the pasting stitches off uh, then we have a button that is related for the camera uh, with a pattern connection using the camera I will talk about that one on a totally separate class one of these days I will take another class about that one and then we can assign color stops because nice thing about the multi needle is that like this one has six colors I, when you start stitching it will go from start to finish and um, uh, you don't have to go and retread and change it unless there's more than 10 colors I'll talk about that a bit later but anything up to 10 colors or if you have six nil up to six colors it will just change it uh, and go from start to finish well if I have an applique piece especially I do want to have color stops and this is where I can assign those ones so let's say that the, I wanted to have it stop just before the last color I will put the hand on it so the hand goes just on um I believe before the second last color so uh, the hand goes on that one that uh, just uh, that you want to stop before so it will show my first four colors and then will stop and, and uh, that way then I can do whatever I need to do uh, with my machine and then I'll restart it again so I can add these uh, uh, hands any way I need to so in an applique design I will want to have then multiple ones on those ones so that is the, uh, what I can do with this one the little hand there's another way later on on the next screen where we can assign uh, color stops while it is stitching uh, just kind of whatever color it is stitching it can have I can have it stop but this is kind of program it before we start stitching then we have a snowman picture that is on only the 10 little machines that we have a camera uh, these ones I, I can use the snowman for positioning also I will uh, talk about that I will show this a bit later and then we have a color sort I mentioned earlier that when we were using this um, border function that automatically if I have multiple using this one it will color sort them the color sort on this uh, uh, allows me to if I have two individual designs maybe I had made a copy of this one using the copy button because I wanted to have them go in this way rather than a horizontal row so now it would embroider my first color, first design and then the second one if I use the color sort then it will do the uh, all the first part I believe there's a yellow one on this one do those wings first on both the designs 
So it's just kind of a little bit more efficient for the embroidery machine to sew it out because it doesn't have to keep moving the head so, so far. So again, uh, we can manually uh, have an apply your color sort in the in, in here on the designs that were not created using that uh, uh, the border function. Uh, well, um, on the, on this one, it is a smart color sort. It will not mess up the internal order of the colors on the design. So, and then also your colors have to be exactly the same on uh, on those ones in order to do the color sort. So it really is a smart one. If those designs are overlapped. It can't do color sorting on that one. So anyway, if they are separated enough and have exactly the same one in a logical order, it will try to do its best on that one. Then we have a couple buttons that are as a default on my machine highlighted. What these ones do is that, um, and I, I leave my newsly highlighted. If I needed to uh, cut my threads in the middle of a color run, uh, and then I will just touch the other uh, uh, unlock and the thread cutter, the little scissor button on my machine. Uh, what would happen on that case uh, now, it will tie on the stitches at the end because I have highlighted it. And then when I start again, it will tie them in the beginning too. But if I have turned these ones off and I stop my machine in the middle of a color run, I literally just stop the machine, that's the, um, actually I had to unlock and then that's the, uh, the thre uh, that, uh, scissor button. On, on that case, uh, it would not tie it. It would uh, actually cut the thread, and uh, and then when I start stitching, it will not uh, tie, tie in the beginning either. So I can have either or, or both or none. I like to have mine on because that is that way I know those my thread uh, st starts and ends are secure. If I had for some reason stopped the uh, machine in the middle of stitching, but that is an option we have on the multi needles. Then um, I can still, if I touch the edit, I can still go back to the editing screen. And then I can save the, the designs into my machine's memory or the external memories or even through the USB cable to my computer. And then I have a couple tracing functions. On this one, I get, yeah, these are great ones to use when the, those border designs, especially if I put those little placement marks there, because I could put my needle onto that corner on that combined design, or then I could put it in the middle of that, on that side. So what it is, my head just moved on to indicating that one. So that will be the kind of the start of the design and they kind of move, move together. The ending, I can change it also different. So these are great ones to use with the, uh, when, if you are using those uh, uh, the border, uh, border designs. Uh, then I have also a trace function. See the, uh, the number one needles are slower down a little bit and it will draw a little box around it. Just kind of so this is the area that the design goes. And it's not a rectangular box. It tries to follow as close as possible around that design. Some other features on this page. Uh, we can, uh, on the 10 needle machines, we have the capability to use the camera for alignment. So I can, uh, 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 if I touch the little, this look like a machine with the camera, I'm going to touch this one first. I'll call this other one after this one. I'm going to touch this one and it'll tell that the machine will move. Actually, the hair will just move. So what this one does, it will uh, superimpose my design and my fabric. And that's the reason why I have this white fabric so that um, I can really show that where the design goes. And it is a live camera, so it'll be my fingers underneath if I put my fingers there. So this way, I, now if I move, oops, sorry, if I move the design, I can see exactly where it would go. And there was my crosshair stay if I had want to line it up center, but I could put it exactly on the position I want. The area that it shows on this one, if I go on my settings, oh, so it tells me I can't use it on this. I need to close this camera first. I go on the settings and on the very last page, when it says camera view area, that is the area it shows. And I had turned it off, but if I turn it on, it just puts a little box around that. This is the area that the camera can see. It just, um, that, that's its viewing area. I don't really like this box. I find it confusing. Again, we have options, so I have turned mine off. But, uh, but that was the area it showed when I was using the camera. If I touch the magnifying glass, again, my head will move. Because the camera is on the, words on the right side of that one, number one needle. So this time I have a little bit larger 
image on it. It's still the same camera viewing area, but it just kind of uh, exposed it a little bit more. So this time I could now again, I could uh, move the design where I want to have it. So I would have it exactly on the spot I want. This was a small design and it fitted on that area. But if I have a large design, that little viewing area would not really help me too much because all I see is little center part of it. That is when I can use these buttons and I can put the needle uh, or the, the, uh, kind of the center in that viewing area where my right side of the design is. So uh, I use this a lot on when I have some of those larger designs that I'm connecting. Again, if I use the, the, uh, the border function that I had post, put those little uh, marks, the little, little uh, pasting stitches, this is a great one to check those ones align it exactly on the, on the needles with that one. So that is a great way and I can check all the uh, nine different points on that design as to where I move the camera. And sometimes it's like, well, this is kind of on the way in here. Well, you can turn these ones off. The bottom ones, see, I can turn them on. And I have one more. I can have a rotate also. I can still rotate it on this screen if I want to rotate it 10 degrees. So maybe I do a little bit more. So I can still, uh, I can do a lot of the editing when I have this screen on. But then like sometimes this is a little bit on the way. So if I touch, and I held down on this the top bar in here. And I said, I don't want to be this button to be there. I'd like to be on this one. So I can move it uh, anywhere on those nine spots where they appear. Or then I can turn them off. So lots and lots of things. And then this will, if I touch the minus, it will just take me back onto that uh, previous view that was this button. The plus took me that larger view. So that's just the, how, how I can zoom, I'm gonna zoom into that viewing area. And then we have some settings on the brightness. If I want to have it, uh, uh, depending on fabric, some of the different brightness may look different. And then I can also then show the center needle position or wherever my needle is, which is really handy when I'm lining up with those uh, uh, markings. So let me go put it in the center. And if I wanted my design to be exactly center, let me put it, if I move it there. See, I wasn't, I didn't hook mine exactly. Well, now I can just move it. That is no worries. Oh, I, I move too much because on the move buttons on the, on this um, this screen, uh, I have three speeds. So this one really moves moves a lot. If I wanted to just notch a little bit, I could go to medium. Well, now it moves a little bit less. And then if I go this one, I have really really precise. It moves like 0.1 millimeters at the time, so I can hold it down to get so I get really precise to get it, uh, get that little dot on the center. Maybe I move it in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna use that one to move. So I get this one. I think it's just so good, I and mean, that makes me look good when I have a machine like this one. So now I, well, it's, it's pretty close in there. It's just to maybe. Oh, move on which just move so little at the time on this smallest but now i think i have it pretty much lined up on my center crosshairs where i wanted to have the design to be okay and then if i wanted i could even save this image in the memory stick as a jpeg picture i'm not sure what i would do with it um but i guess i would put in a facebook and say look my design is going to be going to hoop like this one I don't know, but that allows me even to save it into the image in the memory stick. Let me close that window. So that camera view is really, really great. Then one other option about the machines with the camera, um, I can use the, uh, the, uh, the scanning. So now the head will move. Uh, let me cancel this one. On my settings page, I have turned the fabric th thickness sensor off. Because on the thin, thin fabric, you don't really need to use the thickness sensor. But um, uh, if I have a thicker quilt sandwich or thick towel, it will give you more accurate uh, scan. Because the camera, again, is not right above the needle. It's a little bit on the side, so it will be looking a bit in an angle. So I'm going to turn it on in this case, so i show you how that, uh, uh, what it does when I turn it on. So when I touch this camera now, it will tell the head will move again. But this time, instead of scanning it, it will give me an image showing that you need to put one of these snowman stickers and you need to put it exactly on the place that it tells you and upside down like the picture shows. So this time I will not just um, 
use my display and as long as I get this one inside the box and it is a little bit kind of a slow motion so if it's not perfect this rate and exactly there as long as it is within the red box it's happy with that one that's okay and it is going to recognize that uh, that the uh, snowman sticker and uh, and it's happy with it there uh, and just uh, tells me yep you got that that detected so it says to go ahead and take the sticker out and hit start this is a smaller hoop so it will do pretty quick uh, scanning it has to do just a couple uh, rows if you have a lot of hoop it may maybe do three three scans but now i have an image in the background so i can see exactly where that design goes and i can move it still there because i had it perfectly lined up earlier so now it's just sort of messed it up but that's just another way i could do my, my position maybe i want to have it between those doggies there so uh so i can scan and take a picture of the background then i could use the snowman so this same sticker i could use this one to uh, have my uh, design positioned exactly where i want in this case i need to put the belly button where i want my design to go and the head where i want to have my uh, my direction of the design so if i want to be on that angle i will put this that is this is a really great one because I don't even have to hoop things straight. I can just put my sticker in the in the uh, fabric, and then I, I hoop the fabric, and I use my snowman to uh, then uh, position that one. As long as the design will fit into the frame, it will position. If I wanted to have this design to go exactly where I put my crosshairs, so that way uh, when I have marked my de uh, design, and if I put my sticker lining up along those my markings, my, my uh, using the snowman sticker it will put the design exactly on that spot on that angle so i didn't even have to hoop it using those templates what i showed on my demo in there so at least even if i'm off I, uh, my machine will put it in place i've used this sticker a few times so it started to curl up a little bit from the edges some point uh, uh this will just get the glue will just get too worn out or too lindy and the machine will say that I can't recognize the sticker. That point, you just had to put the new sticker. There's a whole bunch of these that come with the machine, and we sell them in the shop too when you need more. So at some point, you just had to throw them out. I often have them kind of stuck on the side of my machine when I've been using, and then uh, I need to throw them out occasionally. So now that I had put the little uh, no man sticker in the, on the fabric, I will touch a snowman. And again, it just every time tells me that, okay, to revert the original position and angle. It wants to start from the default. Well, I had kind of moved it around and rotated it. So regardless if I had moved it or not, I always get this message. If I had canceled, it will just forget what I did. Nope, I want to go ahead and use the snowman. That's okay. And now it asks, well, what part do you want to use as a reference? The default is the center. And that's where I put my sticker. But I could also use uh, the, any of the other eight sides of it, any corner or the center points. Like maybe I had a pocket and I put my snowman sticker right above the pocket and I want to make sure that my design goes just right above it. So I could use a different ones. But I put my sticker lined up with my center crosshairs on a fabric, so I want, I'm going to use that. And I'll hit scan. Again, every time the head moves, it kind of wants you that it's going to move. And it will, my machine will dim the lights a little bit, turn on the camera, and it is looking for the sticker. And let's see if it's still happy with my old sticker in this one. Yeah, it was. I still I was uh, 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 successful. And uh, now it just tells me to well, take the, uh, now the sticker out because we don't want to embroider on that one. So, um, so now I, I put the design exactly on that position so it actually ended up moving it a tiny tiny bit so a little bit off the center because i had not hooked perfectly which we already noticed when we were doing the set uh, uh, those camera settings there so now i have my design how i want to well then the next biggest question i have always well how do i assign these colors uh, that is uh, the greatest thing on the multi machine is that we, we can have the mas uh, machine threaded with number of colors and then we can just to start the machine and uh, walk away. I have even left the machine in Brodin while we went to walk in the beach, came back an hour later and it was still happily stitching. So, yep, it is a great thing we can sort of leave it or uh, doing it on its own 
And as long as it uh, had enough tra trading or popping and top thread didn't break, uh, and I had made sure that nothing will get caught up, I had a little quilt, quilt block that I was doing, so nothing was going to get uh, thrown in the middle of it. And so it worked out great. So, uh, but also that is a question that sometimes in this especially beginning causes the most frustrations because it is not totally color blind like my sewing machine is. Color uh, meaning color blind. If my sewing machine, if the color says that now the first color is yellow, uh, it really wouldn't matter uh, if I put red one, the machine wouldn't know about it. Well, this machine sort of knows if you use the color memory. What I mean with the color memory, let me go on the settings in there. So on my settings key, and I lived a little bit when I went through all these settings, I, I did uh, talk about this one. On page five on my machine, again, some of the older machines, we don't have the manual color sequence available, but uh, on the newer ones, we can do that one too, when we can manually assign uh, the, uh, the needle numbers, kind of like the commercial embroidery machines are. I like using the color memory a lot, partly because that's how I learned my, with my very first six needle machine, and it is very convenient. So I'm going to show first in here using the uh, manu uh, the, uh, the color memory and then I show how to use the manual color. So now when I touch the embroidery, so we had the, uh, the kind of the editing screen where I can combine designs and do things. And then after on this one, we position the design correctly and then we can go to the embroidery screen. So this is the time that now it assigned the colors because I had reset it all my color memory on my machine. It just went on my the six colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it assigned them with the, all the, the first six needles. So in this case, I need to put an orange, which is kind of yellowish orange. I need to put that on the needle number one, and then the, uh, the um, light brown on the needle two, and so on. Well, I only had my machine threaded, and some of the colors are pretty close what I have. So I could go ahead and just to re-thread things according to on these ones, but I happen to have sort of kind of a yellowish orange already on number one, so I'm good on that one. And then on my number two needle, oh, that's kind of interesting, interesting, I have brown, it's a dark brown, but um, I'm going to leave it as not brown, so I'm good with that one. On my number three needle, oh, oh, I have a really bright orange in there, but I have a blue on number ten. Well, here's a cool thing on this one. I could go ahead and re-thread it. So if I put it on number three, I could then uh, cut the thread on the top, tie them in a knot, pull it through and thread it. And the nice thing on this machine is that uh, I'm going to put back it on one and I will take the thread out of the uh, needle because you never want to put your needle threader in when there's thread. And I touch this needle threader, see what happened on the screen. It turned gray. It's kind of saying that, yep, you done that needle. So that way, so I kick the camera again. Uh, that way um, I can kind of keep track of it. I got this one correct. And again, I'd, I'd had to now use the needle threader button to kind of go, oh, if I hit OK, then they will all go, uh, go uh, back onto the light colors. But that's kind of if I wanted to go through and make sure that I got all assigned, I can use that uh, as an indicator. Well, my two, I was happy. The number three, I didn't really want to use the orange and I'm too lazy to retread it because I have sort of a blue color already on my machine on that uh, needle uh, number 10. Actually, I'm going to use the gray that I have on my needle number uh, eight this time because then I, because I don't have two color blues there. I'm too lazy. So I'm on, on this demonstration. So I'm just going to show how I can uh, change. So a couple ways. I could use a magic wand. There's like a little, uh, like a little uh, godmother, a very good mother coming in there, waving a, phone, uh, a wand. So the number three, I was going to use the needle eight and then okay. So now it's going to be using number eight needle in there. These ones, in, uh, really you don't need to watch too much on the colors in the ways because they're really other needle numbers. So even, uh, so that'll be the, uh, I have the uh, little gray thread in my needle. Uh, on that number eight. So I'm going to use that needle number eight. And then on the next one, I could use the same way I could use the uh, this magic wand. On other way, I can even swap my threads a bit. I could use my little swap button uh, that I will, uh, and the swap button is more permanent. So in that case, if I wanted to really have the number four and number 10 to be swapped, I would have to touch this button. 
Um, so now my number 10 needle would be using this. That is more permanent. That will save it onto my color memory. This magic wand is a temporary one. So you actually see that the needle, that needle number even moved on this one. When on here, it still kept this one showing a blue, but it's a temporary change to use the needle 8. So that's the difference between the swap and then the magic wand. The next one would be the needle number 5 in there. Well, that one I happen to have on number 4, I have that uh, kind of a very milon color, so I'm going to just tell to use that. Oops, I put the wrong one. I was in the wrong, wrong one in there. So now I have have that one. And actually on this one, I'm going to just reset that one. Oh, I reset it them all. So I go that one again was 8, and this one was number 4. And then the last one, there was a, a dark fuchsia. And I happen to have one there, so I'm going to put that number 9. So you can kind of see that I didn't have to re-thread my machine because I only had sort of those colors in there. But if I wanted, I could do that way. So now um, I can go ahead and start embroidering. My machine, I have, I mostly embroider about 700 stitches a minute. I can go up to 1,000. And um, it's just the reason I run a bit slower speed is that my room is kind of small. It gets so noisy. So I often run it a little bit slower speed. And then if I have on a metallic thread in one needle, what I usually do, I slow down that one needle down a little bit. And I a little bit talked about that one on when I went through the settings. But on a, in order for me to change the speed on, I had to be not on this page. I'm too far on the design. Because certain things on, this, uh, um, on the settings, I can change some of the things, but I can't uh, do I can't anchor things at the moment when I'm already on embroidery page. So I'm just going to leave that one. But I could have a lower down on the in the beginning, also some needle numbers that if I have a metallic, even just for that one. Then if I wanted everything to embroider one color, we have a monochromatic. In that case, I would just pick up the, tre the needle that I want to use for that monochromatic. I'll, I'll leave that one back off. And then this one allows me to go forward and backward on stitches, uh, and it shows we are on a stitch zero at the moment. And then uh, we, uh, we have a total of 3,000 stitches, six colors, and it takes seven minutes. And I can still uh, use the camera and zoom, uh, zoom in on that one. Uh, our multi-needle machine, the 10 needles, we also have a keyboard. So maybe I, um, I needed to go on a certain stitch. Well, I can go forward and backward even 1,000 stitches, but I want to, if I want to go all the way, maybe the 2,117, let's say, I'm not going to just an odd number, because I could go with this one, but other option is I can select uh, the key and then do, I think I said 3,120, 3, I guess I said, and set. So now it jumped onto that stitch. And then if I touch the... Um, just to kind of close that. Uh, so that will then um, add, uh, uh, put it me back into the stitch zero. So I can either uh, use the number or I can use the those uh, uh, kind of more generic keys. So I want to start at zero. In order for me to st um, start stitching, I need to unlock the machine and then hit the st uh, uh, this uh, start button. Because if I touch the uh, start button, it tells me I need to unlock it first. Yep, it actually tells. Now my light is green and I can hit start. And my machine has started to stitch. Okay, now it's finishing its first color. I want to just leave it run, running in here to show color, couple, some of the color changes. So that's the nice thing about multi-needle. Um, I didn't need to now go and retread my machine. It automatically moved to my next color type and then it kind of started slower and then it started fixing. On the, my 10 needle machine, one of the things on the setting space was the acceleration speed. See how it kind of started slower? and then I uh, speed it up. Well, that is a standard speed for acceleration. I could make it going even faster, but I, I just normally leave it that way. For me, it's been okay. So I'm gonna let it fix out, and then I will come back. I'm not gonna call you in here watching the needle going up and down. It's getting close to the end of it. 
and uh, I had to speed it up the machine or uh, put uh, 100 stitches, I put it 800 stitches a minute. Uh, on, on the multi hilo machine, I can change the speed even while it's running, because by touching that uh, plus and minus buttons on the bottom right corner of that where the speed is. So that's another nice thing that I don't have to stop the machine, I can just do, uh, change the speed. And here it is doing the last color and then it will be uh, hopefully giving me a happy face and say that it's finished stitching. And there it is, finished embroidery. And it even plays a song for me, so I'm going to go and touch the OK. So that is done. So now if I want to embroider the next color, it will be ready to go. And there it is, beautifully embroidered, exactly on the spot that I want it to go. So that is just a really quick demo on sewing on the machine and how to position in it. So if I wanted to embroider this again, because I need to uh, either rehoop it or move, uh, move at least the design away if I don't sew on top of it. But if I touch embroidery, so now, see, what it did was, uh, it forgot all of my magic wand things. They were only valid for that embroidery. One of the educators from Babylock, I thought she put it very cleverly. She said that, uh, just think of it like a, a very good mother waving it, uh, her wand. And then at midnight, everything will turn back into pumpkin. Well, now all those magic wand ones went back to uh, other original settings. But then if I had, uh, when I had changed this one permanently using the swap key, that one it remembered. So that's how the color memory works. And that's the difference between the magic wand and the, uh, that little uh, swap key. So let's go ahead and add uh, take another design. So I will just touch return. I can go that way back if I want to keep this one edit in there. If I touch the house key, that will uh, kind of give me a clean uh, sheet and start over again. Okay, I want to get another design. There's a, and there's a reason what I want to have a certain one. I'm going to take this little baseball player set. This design, when I look at the colors, we have some of the ones that were the same ones as, as we had previously, but some are not. Well, this kind of shows easily how the color memory remembers things. So uh, I've already had threaded my machine with some of the, what was the oranges and things. So when I just, I'm not going to change any colors. I'm going to go edit end and I may need to move my design a little bit. So let's just take a picture. So actually, I'm going to take off that uh, fabric thickness sense. So I don't need that one. And then I'll just take a picture of the background. So I would know where to put this design. Uh, so we're going to have dockies and the baseball players at the same one. There we go. So that way, if I want to move this one on that spot. So now when I go embroidery, well, now my machine is telling that I had certain needles already assigned on uh, uh, from the previous color run that were the same ones. So it just tells me, go ahead and leave those ones because the first one on this color was the orange, which happened to be the same one I had before. And then number five, well, it uh, thought we had it in a, a number five because I only had magic wand it this one. So it thinks it is on the num number five needle, even though mine it was number four. But I, I can still do a magic wand or I could do a swap. Because how happens that I have a white thread, but it is on number six needle. So I will remember what it thought it had. So And then anything that was extra, it added on those other slots. So I would now need to go ahead and embroider my, uh, change my threads before I embroider. So I could go again. I really have a little number nine. I have it on the uh, on the number five. So again, I could go and tell that black to be is number five, and I have my white. I have actually on number six uh, six needle, and then the vermilion I had at four. So I can still go and change those temporarily. Or I could kind of go permanently. I'm, I'm going to just reset those ones. And I will say that no, actually my vermilion. So I'm going to go that one and the white. I will swap those ones. And then and my vermilion is in the right spot. And then I will swap the black and white because that's where my black is. And then white and dark fuchsia. So see, I can kind of go in. And so happens that that is a dark fuchsia there. And uh, so that way I get my little numbers pretty well lined up. Well, my blue is not blue there. I'm going to actually tell that it's this one, even though it's not. But that way I have my designs fairly closely. Oh, actually, I did the wrong one on that one. I'm going to clear that one, put it back because I wanted to have it with uh, this one. 
So if you do a mistake, you can still change your mind there. So that way, now my, my colors kind of match, match more what I have in my machine. And that way, now that is the order that will be stitching. Well, I'm not going to stitch this other, uh, other one. It's not that pretty design on, on going on my doggies. But that's I want to show that how the color memory works. Let me show then if we have more than uh, 10 colors, how would that work? So I just went as the house key, go back on to the home page. And then this time I'm going to go ahead and pick up this little design set. Well, this one only has four colors, which lots of the ones are the same I already have there. I'm going to add on other one. So I go back on this one because this is how we can combine this uh, uh, all the uh, designs. And this time I want to find the... Let me just find one because I want to have some that have same colors and some of the ones... Oh, there it is. I know this is kind of an odd combination, but uh, now I have uh, designs that some of the colors are shared. So uh, I have now a lot of color changes, total of 15. So the first one had four and the other one had then 11 colors. And you can see some of these ones do repeat there. So if I go back in there, there was an orange on that first one. We also have an uh, uh, orange, oops, kind of jumped around in there. I have orange also on the second one. So that's uh, again what the multi needle does. It's uh, uh, it will uh, know a uh, um, it is a, it's a smart color sort on that one. It is a, it's a smart one that whenever it recognizes that I have the same color coming later, it will try to keep that one on that spot. And I have more than 10 colors this time. So now it will uh, uh, improve a part of it and then it will tell you retread it. But it will try to keep the ones as much as well as it can. So if I just touch OK, edit end, and then I will have to go in Brewery screen. So this time it tells me that those ones I would need to now retread it because it remembered whatever I had on earlier as uh, used there and also when I did the swap key. But now it will tell that I would have to retread those ones. I'm going to just OK. I'm not going to retread them this time. But if I go down in, in there. So this time I, I, you see there's a red line. So on this one we had total of 15 color changes. So the first um, 12, it was able to uh, use the current colors that I had because there were some of the ones that were repeated from the previous, like the vermilion, I guess, was maybe twice in there, uh, and then uh, and then the orange. So that way uh, it was able to already keep those. But then we did not have anywhere uh, on the combination and there. We didn't have any lilac, magenta, or clay brown. So this case, my machine would improve up to this point, will stop and will tell you where to retread those next three colors. So, yep, we can do designs that have more than 10 colors or six colors in the case of a six needle. Okay, let me then show how we can anchor some of the needles on, on colors. I normally have black and white in large pools on my machine at the needles number five and six. Because on the way I have my machine, those are the hardest ones for me to change. They're kind of a furthest away. So I usually use those ones and I anchor them. Well, I had... Uh, uh, unanchored everything so the machine was able to use all the 10 colors to assign me a threads in, when using the color memory. But if I wanted to you know, make, make sure that, uh, that uh, certain spools will stay there, uh, that it, it, I don't have to keep changing those ones. So I effectively kind of changed my machine from 10 needle to uh, 8 needle. Well, if my design has those uh, black and white colors, it will then obviously use them too, but it does not mess up those uh, alignment. So I'm going to go on my uh, on my um, settings key, so I could touch the settings and go to page 3. Other way to get there is if I touch this button where I can do the oiling and things, I touch this one, it will take me on to that same page. There's a third page on the settings key. So on the, at the moment, um, I had in there the white is really still how I want it to have. I have a white on that one. I'm going to anchor that. So that's set. And now that one is anchored. But then on, on here, it says dark brown. I actually have black on that one. I will select the black and set. So now those two needles have been anchored so that my uh, machine on the color memory can't reassign those for any other color than those two. And if I wanted to, um, if I want to anchor this one, and if I accidentally do or want to release it, I just that re reset. This is also where I can set on the, 
if I want to have uh, the, some of the needles, if I have a very tiny needle, I could turn off the needle thread. So anything, I, any, I select a needle and that's that one. But if I do, let's say that I had put metallic thread on a needle one and I will touch set. Well, in this case, I could even slow down now this machine speed for maybe on my metallic, I only want to run it 400 stitches a minute. Because I find lots of times those metallic threads will run better if I have it a little bit slower speed. I uh, normally also loosen the top tension a little bit and that will be the knobs on the top for the metallic. But I'm going to just to reset that when I, I want to leave it as normal. So on the, on the uh, newer machines we can uh, turn off the needle threader and set the maximum speed for ne individual needles too. But that is how I can anchor. So now if I go on and this is the same design that I had those two uh, funny looking pieces in there. And you still see the image in the background. Uh, uh, if, I, if I find it confusing, remember on the settings page I, page, I can either turn it off or even delete. So that way I don't have that background image. It's a question we get a lot. It's like how, how I get rid of that one. So on the settings page you can uh, go there. So now if I go to, uh, in there, also on this page, here's another thing. I can turn it on and off on this page too, but I have to be on the kind of the second page after the uh, editing page. Or then I can also save this image onto the memory stick if I want it to. Uh, uh, that's just, I'm not sure why, but I have the capability. I never used that one. So now if I go and hit the embroidery button. So what happens on this case is now that uh, it kept my black and white in the anchor. So everything else was able to reassign. So if I go down, uh, I I had only up to whatever number that would be there, uh, up to the, uh, few, few, few colors I could able to sew with the current settings. And then on, I had to, had to change my, actually it looked like I could sew 10 colors on the, my uh, first uh, patch of needles that I had. And then I would have to uh, change the five last. So I kind of, uh, uh, like I said, I changed my 10 needle machine to an uh, 8 thread machine because this design didn't have any black or white. So that is how the anchoring works. Okay. Well, then how do we use the um, manual color settings? So I'm going to go on my settings screen and then go on to the page 4 on my machine, which is manual color sequence. I will turn that one on. And uh, it already shows a little symbol on the top left corner showing that I have that manual color sequence set at the moment. So I will pick up that, that first design. So this time, and I'm not going to move it around. Now when I'm on the second page, uh, instead of having the hand on this one, we have now our spools. This is where I can assign the needles where I want to have my, uh, my thread to be picked up. The first color was orange. Well, mine happened to be on the needle number one was orange. The second one was brown. That was still okay. Then the uh, blue. Well, now I was going to use the needle number eight. So I'm just assigning the needle numbers. And then the blue, I had 10. Then uh, the vermilion, that was four. And then the dust fusa was nine. So I assigned the needle numbers on this one. And then if I need to put color stops, I have them uh, that symbol on this page too. But now when I go to embroidery screen, I have assigned those ones. If needed, I could still change some of the ones to use my magic wand on this one also. So uh, again, depending on how you run your machine, if you do a lot of monochroming and you only have certain ne uh, needles uh, set up in your machine, the man manual color sequence is really handy for that one. I do lots of different kinds of designs, so I like to use the color memory. And partly it is because that's how I learned the machine, because that was the only option my first six nil that I had. And then for lettering, uh, we have more built-in monograms in the machine where I can use uh, do either three letter or two, uh, or two letter or in different ways of three letter or put even some frames around those ones. But then we have fonts, and we have quite many fonts on this machine. There are uh, several kind of lots of fonts, but then we have six very, very small fonts. The, and when you start seeing lots of letters, if I take one of these and do ABC, it is a very, very small font. But these are just about, um, they are, I guess, less, uh, less than a uh, quarter inch height on that one. So let me do return on that one. 
So if I take that one, this one is even a little bit smaller. These are digitized to be tiny, tiny letters. And the best results with these ones would be to use the 60 weight or 80 weight thread in the machine because they'll be much more readable. And then we have also some Japanese, the kind of kindergarten Japanese. So I like this font a lot, so let me use that font. So any of the fonts that I pick, I will get the keyboard, capital letters, small letters, numbers, and some more characters. Uh, and then we have also the, in, uh, uh, the international letters. So if I do A, B, C, and then we have multi-line text. So I, will, I can just to put the return key there, and maybe I'll do one, two, three. Very, very boring. But now I have two lines of text. Um, I can, on again, uh, on these newer machines, we have a justification, center, right, or left justified. And I can uh, also change the size. But see what happened when I change the size in this one. Only the last letter changed. And if I, I have my Lumine, on my Lumine on this one, the whole string would change. So different machines have it a little bit different. So if I wanted this to be on the medium size lettering, I would need to pick up that... Uh, uh, size after the first one. So I'll, I'll just delete. Delete really is backspace. So if I touch in here, when I have this first, if I change the size there, and then I do two, three. So everything after that will be on that size. I can still resize this on my editing screen, but that one allows me to already kind of pick up on the three major sizes. Now it actually shows better if I do the justification. I, I have still a bit more letter editing. If I wanted to have this B and C to be large letters, or capital letters, I don't have to start over. I can just move that little uh, red line after, after the letter I want to change. And then I will delete that one. And maybe I want to do B. Let me do delete that one. And then I have everything on the capital letters. So we still can edit a lot. I can also change the array on these ones. Uh, and because, even though we have multi-line in here, whatever line I'm working is, that's the one it changes. So I can have a frown, or I can have a smile, or I can have this ones to go on a stair step. Let me put that in a straight line, and maybe I will pick up this second line, and I will do this one as a stair step. So I can change uh, the, uh, the direction how I want to have them. I'm holding down this uh, right side pattern. So now they are going um, just to side by side. If I stop, you're going to see they're almost side by side. So I'm going to change the angle of it. But if I just keep going, holding down, takes a while, they will go on top of each other. So we have a lot of letter editing in the machine. And there we have, they are top of each other now. Okay, and then let me go and set this one. Uh, this come because I have two lines. They came as group. So if I now move this around, they move as a group. And it shows even that they are grouped. I can ungroup it. And then if I select either one of those ones, I can, uh, I can do them. Uh, I can move this one at a time. So I can have them still more in the, kind of uh, grouped individually. Well, then we have other patterns that are now available that we didn't have before. One of them is the density. For the letters, I can adjust the density uh, on this screen and I can go down 80% or up to uh, one, 120. So I can plus minus 20% uh, change the stitch density. And then we have, of um, uh, course, we can still resize this one. Uh, I can have the small, medium, large on this one. Or I can just to make it just even a little bit bigger on, on this screen. So we still have a capability to resize these letters. And I can even squash them out or stretch them out. And then, of course, I can rotate it. And, and, and they come as a default black. I can put whatever color I want to have those ones. And then um, I could, of course, use the border function if I want to make a whole bunch of them. And then I can do a copy. Maybe it's a duplicate. I'm going to delete. That's enough for APCs. And then, uh, because I only have one selected, the groupies are not available, but I can turn them into uh, an applique and then use these other functions too. But then the extra ones. Uh, well, one, one point, we can't mirror letters because they wouldn't look very good if you mirror them. So that is a, uh, one of the options is not available on letters. 
as a, uh, as a design that will show it as a whole continuous string. If I touch multicolor and then I'll touch my color. Now I can uh, put each letter to be of different color. So that way I don't have to do them all at one color. So I but I had to touch the multicolor for that one. And then I can still go and change the array if I forgot to do it in a previous screen. But I can also I change the spacing. Those were very close together. So I may want to stretch them out a little bit because they were just so close together. And then um, the next one, this is really cool function. Um, if I was just doing initials like those big ABC, on this case, I would most likely want to have my machine to trim after each letter. But if you saw a whole sentence, and especially using those tiny little fonts, it will take an awful long time to sew it out because it will cut the threads between each letter. And it will look kind of messy under under side too because you'd have these little thread trims uh, uh, underneath each one. That is when, let's say maybe this one, I don't want to have it cut between, I will turn that function off. So what it means in this case, it will still tie your stitches, but instead of trimming, it just goes to the next one. We'll have a jump stitch on that one. And then you can trim them off with scissors later on. Um, on the small letters, I have done some recipe towels. I um, I just uh, had those ones, the the word, and uh, kind of left those uh, little jump stitches. They were so close together, you barely see them. But then manually, I cut those jump stitches between the words. Well, then if I suddenly realized, mm, I don't like that font at all, I can still change the font. Maybe I'd like to use the really large font. Oh, that looks kind of weird on that one because I've been squashing it. But I can still change the font on this one if I don't want the one that I had before. I, I still can edit. I don't have to start all over again. And maybe on this one, I wanted to do this one as, say, uh, um, as a monogram. Uh, and, and I didn't like that monogram fonts we had on our previous pages. We also have a letter edit that I can now, uh, let me see if I go in there, I can just to change that size smaller and then if I can cut that one and maybe change that one. So that's just one way I can just to uh, make my letters to be uh, uh, different sizes, how to send the one to be larger and then maybe that is uh, um, that's a little bit too big. So I will reduce that size a little bit. And then if I don't want that letter, that font, I can still change the font to be a different. Mm, I don't like that one now. So I can, I still have a lot of letter edit. So on the on the font type in here, I did the whole string, but this one I can do more individual letters. Then I could also cut out. So this case, I have a knife. So I can move the knife on the different positions. If I touch the knife and there. So now these designs, these are individual ones. So I could make my monogram exactly the way I want. So very, very much on the letter edit. And this last button in here, that will allow me to combine separated patterns again and put them in a different order. So if I wanted to have maybe the this to be these, uh, different order that it is ABC, so when I, I touch, I get little uh, numbers there, so I can have one or two. So let me take the one and two. So if I want these to be now combined as one string in the order one, two, I would touch this button. If I want to call them opposite order, I'll touch this one. So now they were combined together and it shows up to be CA. And when I'm still on this mode, that is now one string. So I could now add, uh, add this one and maybe I want to have this to be the B to B4, so I can put my two before, so I can make my own words this way. And even can I add this one? Maybe I'd like to have the, let me go and select, uh, unselect those ones. And if I say this to be one and this to two, I can have just either way, and now I have a new string. So I can uh, may, uh, combine uh, uh, lines on, or strings of characters into one. Uh, one single one. Yeah. And then we have a test pattern. And anytime if I change to another thread brand, I like to run a test pattern. And this is something that uh, when um, our service technicians service the machine, they always run this test pattern to make sure that everything is okay on the tensions. So where I can find this test pattern on my machine, it is on that first group 
and then I that's this pattern. There are three stitches on this one, but this one is has to really designed to be a test pattern. And I will set that one. And then um, if I uh, have my manual color uh, selection, it will be kind of easy because if I go in on that that one, it will go all my needles on that order, except um, yeah, it goes all the, all the all the needles on that order. So that is a great way I could just run my uh, test pattern easily for all those needles. Let me go back and I'm going to go one more screen. I will change my uh, my colors uh, so that I'm using the color memory. So I turn the manual color sequence off. And now if I go in there and go, uh, it will remember whatever I still, even if I went back onto the, uh, the manual color, uh, and, I, and I turn back to color memory, it remembers where I had it last time. And it will remember when I turn it off too. So that is a great thing about the color memory. So in this case, I could now uh, run this one. Only problem is that uh, uh, it would stop after the uh, first uh, eight, um, eight colors because I, it was using the color memory. Well, if I wanted to force on those needles that I have, I can still go and assign the colors on this one. So maybe I'd like to have these ones on uh, the colors that I had on my color memory. I could just go ahead. I knew I didn't have any pink in there, so I could go and pick up. Um, I can't remember what they were now, but I can pick up in here. So I know these ones I had set up on my machine. So I could go and change maybe the this one I'll put as white because the white wasn't earlier there. So if I go now, I might have it there. Uh, all in there without color stop. So that was I kind of forced it to go in there onto the using those ones. Um, and it was just a stitch in a funny order, uh, but that way I can do a color uh, a color test. But really the easiest way would be to do the, uh, this one, uh, to just run it as, uh, let me go back on the house key and I will change it back onto manual because that way I, I don't have to kind of see which needle was it the one was off. I'd like to call them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So I'm gonna go on this case, put my manual color sequence, pick up the design, set it, and then uh, then I will need to move it. I'm gonna use this function this time. We have multiple ways I can move the design. So I know that that's not in a good spot. So I'll speed it up a bit. <laughs> I don't want to sew over my pieces there and that way because this design was wider I can check to see what on the way the other side will fit yep I will still okay in there I can just check, check the both ends that, uh, that they are not over anything I want to and then when I go embroidery and then I will unlock it and I start stitching it's gonna stitch the entire uh, all, every needle on this one and then I can show uh, I can check to see if my tensions are correct Okay, the embroidery has finished. To take the hoop out, I normally put my hands kind of underneath and then with my thumb on these little levers, lift it up and pull the hoop out of the way. And here is my embroidery designs, those beautiful designs that uh, I just made. So uh, the test pattern, all it shows uh, is just the satin stitch columns. And when I look the back side, there we go. What I want to see is about one third of that uh, uh, popping thread in the middle. Mine are maybe a little bit too tight because they all are that way kind of about the same amount. So if, if you have all the needles about the same amount, that means that then is the popping, sense, popping tension that you would need to adjust a little bit. And I had shown on one of the earlier videos on how to uh, adjust that one. So I could maybe loosen my screw a little bit. If I do tiny little letters, very intricate designs, then I may want to have it on that tighter. So I may actually leave it there, it's not too bad, but I could loosen it maybe a little notch. But if one of these was obviously totally different than the other, that is when you would use the knots on the, knobs on the top of the machine for that color. And these are the tension knobs for the top thread. So lefty loosey, righty tighty, and they even have a little uh, marked little lines in there, kind of indicating how how much you have tightened it. 
So if I had certain one of these pools that was obviously much tighter or looser, I could not just that one. So if I uh, put metallic thread, I typically, I often put it on the number one needle and then I will just loosen this quite a bit. Because metallic threads, they behave differently. Again, if you have a little bit heavier threads, you may want to loosen your top tension and then thinner threads uh, vice versa. So uh, the best way is always if in doubt, especially when you change brands of bobbin thread, run that test uh, a sample and then you can see if it is a bobbin tension that you need to change or if one of those threads is different weight. I'm going to show about uh, just some of the tips using a design that was on a design that was on built in a machine. I have plugged my memory stick and I have some kind of this is lots of stuff I have on my folders, but there is one that I wanted to show a little t-shirt uh, pattern from Hope Yoda. So this one is uh, in a PES format. I can use PES, a DST, PHC also on this machine, uh, but the PES uh, is the normal format for Baby Lock and Brother. Well, this is the design was uh, originally created for a single little machine that the hoop goes on different orientation. So when you have a larger design, you may get a little message like this one saying that, that the pattern combination is too large for the extra large embroidery frame. So uh, kind of just a note in here, but it has a button on the bottom uh, right corner saying 90 degrees. So if I rotate that one, now this would fit and then I can uh, start set. It's just because the orientation on a hoop on the multi needle is different than it is on the single needle machines. So of course it now can rotate it uh, upside down. Um, so I can still go ahead and then now if uh, that's 90 degrees, it'll actually do 180 degrees. So, yep, I can use the design that was uh, 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 created for the single little machines and you may get that message occasionally. Of course, this one is too big now to fit on my uh, four by, uh, five by seven hoop. So I would have to use at least an eight by 12 on this one, but I'm not gonna embroider this out. I just want to show this design because this one uh, has an applique. So when I go, anytime I pick up the design that wasn't one of these built in or something that I had used in Brody software, the, uh, the B11 or any the B, uh, rather the B design software or baby lock palette software. If I send the design from those ones, I can assign the colors and it'll read the colors correctly. But if I have any other design, these colors may come up really odd. And even if it says in here, uh, like some of the ones maybe says how it's called and things, even if I'm, if I had the, uh, on my machine, if I had a color memory, again, I kind of have all cleared out it at the moment, but if I had on this one that it remembered the colors from my previous one, uh, because I'm now down to 64 color chips. Well, the, uh, anything that is sort of in the shade of the emerald green on this one would be maybe combined onto this. So if I want, if I had, let's say that only had a, a one of the needle numbers that I had this emerald green color, on that one, I would want to still select that color on my on my screen on there, even though it said it. Because when I touch that one, the color changed a little bit. If I touch the reset, gonna go back to original. It changed a little bit. It was a little bit different shade of green. So even if it says or says in here already, if I'm using just a name or color, I still go ahead and select that, and I know it's exactly the same color shade that my machine is thinking. Otherwise, it will assign another color, uh, other needle number if we use the color memory. But I can check in here to see which part of the designs are uh, uh, going to be uh, embroidering on uh, different colors. So the first one was that little leaf. The second one is a place, uh, the little placement line for the applique fabric. Because um, this design wasn't digitized uh, in the, uh, on the machine, the built-in design, so you are using the uh, the settings on uh, on a uh, embroidery software where I can actually tell it to be applique material and applique placement. So in this case, it was a sort of, uh, it was a color number on this one. Well, that is really how I want to use because if I have this one, it's going to assign a needle number for that one. Well, I don't really want to have an extra needle for that one. I may just want to use the same color that I would be using for that outline. They had kind of sky blue, so I'm going to pick up the sky blue there. And I'm going to put both of these kind of the, the color, uh, the, uh, co co colors, actually really all three. Again, it says sky blue, but it's a different tone. I'm going to touch it again and get the, the same one. That weighs my placement line, tack down line, and my 
uh, statistics will be the same uh, color on that one because that's normally if I do applique that is how I change those ones and then I would go on this one harvest gold but I will still go and select all these colors and after you use this machine for a while you almost can remember which ones were on the different areas so I can kind of pretty much say that that, that, oh, that was now I missed in there there's a pewter and there was another pewter a little bit different color so maybe I'll put the black this time on that one so I can still uh, change my colors on uh, it, it, how they are and I'm, I'm literally just going around and uh, just to uh, assign in colors on of course I can have different colors if I don't want the pink I could put even green on that one or whichever I want so now that I, I, if I would be ready to embroider this one obviously if I now start edit end it's going to complain that it won't fit onto my embroidery screen so I would have to change to a larger hoop because minute I touch this one it will, it will tell me that no nope, it won't fit on it and the editing screen I can have it bigger um, instead of me moving the, uh, the frame in there and changing, I'm going to just cheat and I'm going to resize it. And I'm going to use that resizing that I can make it uh, uh, proportional and it, okay, and it put it original location, meaning it uh, rotated. Actually, what I need to do, I need to rotate it first because then I can resize. There we go. So now that should fit onto my 5x7 frame. So if this is an applique design, what I would want to do is assign color stops. So the first color I want to have it shown, that was the leaf. The next one, this one was the applique uh, little placement line. I will have it shown also. But then I want my machine to stop. So on this one, I will put my hand. So this time the hand will just to, uh, be just to, uh, on, on that color that I want to stop before. So I will put my applique fabric on top of it and then I will do my, uh, I will tack it down, then I will trim, so I need to have it stop on that one too. So I will put the hands on those two. And rest of the, this design can be so stitching out all the way. So that is how I can assign color stops. If I had used manual color selection, when this symbol would look different, let me actually go back and I will change that one to be back to the manual color selection, uh, color sequence when I had the button. So in this case, we don't have the hand looking in there because this is where I can assign those color numbers, the little numbers where I want, but here's my hand. So I could have the hand, hand on that one too. And it remembered when I changed it on the previous screen. So we have it on a little bit on a different screens on, uh, on that one. But um, let me go back because again, I need to go on the other screen in here so that I can change some of the settings. So I'm going to go back onto the, out of the color memory. So now if I go ahead and if I want to then go to embroider, so it will, it will just tell me where I need to put those, uh, those threads and then, uh, then uh, when it embroiders to go to, towards the second color, it will stop and then I, I can put on my piece of fabric so the next color and then stop again and then I can trim it. Um, if I forgot to put those uh, stops I can still manually stop it on that that's in the reverse stop button. What that means is that if I was stitching on this one let's go, I'm going to go to the next color. Okay, so that's the next color there. So if I was stitching this one and I realized that I forgot to put these little uh, color stops so while my machine is stitching, I could touch that reserve stop. I will finish that color and then stop. So this button I can touch, this is one of the few buttons that I can touch even on the screen when the machine is running. Most other times it will either beep or stop the machine. I can change the speed or, uh, or turn the reserve color stop if I forget to put those colors, uh, color stops in there when I was programming it in. <laughs> 